On this episode of Beyond the Hunt, we call this one the shoulder blade buck, aptly named because this is where you do not want to shoot a whitetail buck with a bow and arrow. On this particular hunt, Julie is hunting with her bow. We're hunting whitetails to kind of give you a lay of the land so that you understand our setup. We are looking to the west. We've got a great big CRP field that rolls up on top of this hill and we're actually down in the bottom to the east of the top of that hill in a little creek bottom. What the deer typically like to do is bed in the CRP and then they'll come down and run a scrape line along that creek bottom and we're set up in one of those trees. It's the perfect time of the year. The rut is on. We're just waiting for that right buck to come cruising by chasing a doe. I remember because we were not very high in the tree. I remember the tree stand, our tree stand set. <laughs> she doesn't like heights, but I love to hunt at six to eight feet. It's not eye level, but it's low enough that it gives you a really nice shot angle. It gets you over the top of a lot of the obstruction or topography. Yeah, you can, you can see just enough around, but it's not so high especially, again, for me, where it's uncomfortable, the angle and, and all of that. I feel comfortable in those types of settings rather than, I mean, I love the ground hunting, but there in Iowa, the brush is just so thick. I mean, you just, you, your shooting lanes are pretty minimal. I've always said this, and I believe I even stated it in the show. If you could ever visualize a big white tail buck that's truly in love, <laughs> with the doe that he's following. This was this, it. <laughs> this is the perfect scenario. As they made their way down this little ditch or creek bottom that we were in, every time the doe stopped and would smell this little whatever or sniff the tree, or and, and she would then carry on and the buck would come in right behind her and he would stop and smell and kind of do the exact same thing. And then she would look back and he'd be like, yeah. <laughs> looking at me, you're looking at me. This whole dynamic of these two deer in love coming down and then of course we're waiting, hiding in disguise to change the plans. And then just as they get within shooting range, I stood up out of my tree stand <laughs> and caught the seat on the back of my leg. I had let the tree stand seat fall, clank, and the buck looks at us at 15 yards, and I really thought at that point it was game over. And it was dead quiet. I do remember that. I mean, it was like, of course, when any deer gets in close and you're about ready to shoot, it seems like everything just goes silent. I mean, they were so locked on us. <laughs> they were, but the funny thing was, is obviously the buck was just reacting to the doe when the doe accepted us, um, or the noise or whatever it was. Again, neither one of them knew exactly what it was, but she kind of accepted and went back to doing her thing. And although he didn't want to let us go, so to speak, he kept watching her and, eh, okay, you're not wound up about it. I guess I'm not either. He did tolerate it. <laughs> we're in love. And then my part at watching those deer come in, again, just everything about it was so cool to see. I love their colors and just their, their dark face and to see everything put together and especially during fall colors, but just real dark antlered, heavy, just one of those that you know he's a good mature buck, but just a really pretty buck. Everything felt right, everything, I mean, the, where he was at, the distance, all of that, and I came to full draw. felt good about it, but I just, I stuck it right in the shoulder blade. Not in the crease, but just right in the shoulder blade. And it doesn't kill him. It doesn't kill him. <laughs> we found? It, it I, I mean, it literally bounced back off of him. We saw the deer the next day chasing does right in the same spot. That is the deer that I shot at last night and hit the shoulder blade. That's a good feeling to see him out, not even camping, not even worrying about it. Here's the one thing, I guess, if, if we can dive into this a little bit. Low poundage bow that Julie's shooting, 45 pounds, and she's killed a lot of animals. But she just kind of crept up on that crease. We call it the crease right behind the shoulder blade. You just want to stay away from, with the lower poundage bows especially, stay away from that, get back. You know, there's a lot of long 
in that foot behind the shoulder blade, and that's a great place to be for lower poundage bows, because a lot of times you can slip between the ribs, get the lungs, and it's a, it's a lethal shot. You hit the knuckle of that shoulder blade, that right there is hard to penetrate. This was a great lesson for me. Things are very routine for me. Like, I have to go through a process in my mind before I pull that trigger, and things have to be perfect. If the shot isn't there, if the angle isn't there, I mean, there are so many things, so many times I've not taken the shot. So it definitely made me stay back off the crease. So I always go through my mind. I go to the, you know, up the crease and back, and that's, that's my shot. If it's there, I'll take it, and if it's not, he gets the pass. It was a learning lesson mm -hmm. for you, but I think it made it all better when we showed up the next day and literally got out of the pickup <laughs> to walk to that stand about a half a mile and within 100 yards of parking the pickup to get out. Here he comes running by the pickup, grunting, chasing a doe. And guess who was happy? It's such a relief because as a hunter, you care so much about the animals that you are hunting and you don't want to wound them. You're out there to make an ethical, clean shot, a quick kill. And when you don't do that, it is hard and it's very emotional and I worried about that deer. I mean, just to have that reassurance, just to see him run and push in a doe the next day was, it just felt so good. I mean, shoot, there wasn't even a nick. I don't even think he knew <laughs> he got hit with an arrow, but just to see them doing their thing and, and not a limp, not anything about him, that was the best feeling ever. It was an awesome hunt, very educational. We learned a lot that day. Hope you guys can learn something from this hunt. So if you enjoyed this episode, we'd love to have you hit subscribe, click the like button, and be sure to ring the bell for more notifications, and we'll see you on the next one.